The Spanish Fork Wastewater Treatment Plant has been operating since 1956, over 60 years, with major upgrades in the mid-80s. During this time, the amount of wastewater processed has grown between 4 and 5 million gallons every day. And with an ever-increasing population, it is no wonder Spanish Fork City is beginning the process of building a new wastewater treatment plant. So sit back, relax, and join us on a tour of the current plant as we describe how it operates, emphasize the need for a new treatment plant, and help you understand how we each can make our sewer system stay clean and functional. The treatment process begins when wastewater, which is anything that runs down your pipes, arrives at the treatment plant and enters this building. The wastewater passes through step screens, specifically designed to remove large solids which should never be in the sewer system. Please do not flush diapers, so-called flushable wipes, feminine hygiene products, condoms, makeup kit accessories, clothing, or any other inappropriate material. These items can cause unpleasant backups in your home and costly repairs to pipes within the water collection system. Anything that is caught in the step screens is removed, washed, and taken away to the landfill. Whatever passes through the step screens comes here to the grit chamber. This chamber is designed to allow heavier solids, such as dirt, sand, and rocks, to sink to the bottom. This allows only the wastewater to flow through to the next stages of the treatment process. The velocity of the water is slowed, and air is pumped through the pipes into the water to facilitate this separation. The solids are pumped off the bottom of the grit chamber and also taken away to the landfill. The waste removed from the step screens and grit chamber combined is about one ton per week. We again strongly urge you to only flush appropriate disposable material. The wastewater is now finished in the grit chamber and is split into opposite directions leading to one of our three primary clarifiers. Primary clarifiers use the law of gravity to allow the dense material, called sludge, to settle to the bottom of the large basins. The water comes up through the middle and slowly makes its way toward the outside wall, spending an average of five to six hours in the basin, all the while allowing the solids to settle to the bottom. There are sweeping arms on the top and bottom of the primary clarifiers used to either get rid of floating debris or to collect the sinking sludge, all of which gets pumped to the digester. Much of the foam and other icky debris you see on top of the water is supposed to be previously removed in the grit chamber. This is yet another reason a new treatment plant is being built, to replace old or damaged equipment and outdated processes. 90 to 95 percent of the settleable solids are removed by the time the wastewater leaves the primary clarifiers, and 40 to 60 percent of the suspended solids are removed as well. The water now flows from the three primary clarifiers to this building, which is known as the intermediate pump station. The wastewater flows in and is brought to a higher tank, all accomplished with a screw pump. Each screw pump is capable of pumping as much as 10 million gallons of water every day. From there, most of the wastewater flows to the aeration basins, while some flows to the trickling filter. On top of the trickling filter, you can see the wastewater is sprinkled over this plastic media. The purpose of the vast and multiple layers of media is to expose the wastewater to a large surface area of good bacteria growing on the plastic. This removes any bad bacteria as well as harmful chemicals such as ammonia. Although the trickling filter used to be a cost-effective and natural form of wastewater treatment, it now no longer provides the quality of cleanliness needed to comply with current standards, which includes nutrient removal, a process the new treatment plant will better accomplish. The water that does not find its way to the trickling filter flows to one of these four aeration basins. In each basin, we find good bacteria, or microorganisms, to help treat the wastewater. The large wheels provide mixing and air, while the waste from the sewage provides the food. Since air is provided, this is an aerobic treatment process. It's a natural process harnessed and expanded to fit the city's growing demand and provides all that's required to keep those cute microorganisms happy in a good growing environment. 
After flowing through either the trickling filter or the aeration basins, the wastewater comes here to one of two secondary clarifiers. Much like the primary clarifiers we saw earlier, these clarifiers allow the denser material to sink to the bottom. A large portion of the activated sludge that collects on the bottom of these clarifiers is returned to the aeration basins in order to reuse the microorganisms, while any excess is pumped to the digester for further treatment. After spending approximately 18 to 24 hours in the treatment plant, the wastewater now flows through the chlorine contact basin. This chlorinator pump takes the chlorine from its holding tank and mixes it into the water. The chlorine contact basin slows the water flow through these long channels and gives the chlorine time to perform proper disinfection before discharging the clean water into Dry Creek. Wait a minute. We forgot about the solids and sludge from earlier. Let's go over to the digesters. Unlike the aeration basins that use an aerobic treatment process, the digester operates on anaerobic treatment or treatment without air. Through technology and innovation, we again have adapted the natural biological process similar to what happens inside a human digestive system and produced it on a very, very large scale. It takes a minimum of 15 days for the sludge and solids to pass through all four digesters and move on to the next step of their treatment process. As the sludge comes out of the digesters, it still has a high liquid content. So in order to remove some of that liquid, it comes here to the belt press. As the sludge is pressed through these folding layers of the belt press, it goes from 4% solid to almost 18% solid. Now that may not seem like much, but remember, your body is only 40% solid matter. The sludge makes its way out of the belt press and is collected here. This treatment process is so thorough that even flies, cockroaches, rats, or other rodents are not attracted to this newly dried material, which will either be used as fertilizer on farms or taken to the landfill. As we look to the future, the new wastewater treatment plant will be critical in meeting regulations of cleanliness and safety for Spanish Fork City. Now that you have learned what not to flush, as well as the time and effort that goes into treating wastewater, we hope you will be more cognizant of the role each and every one of us plays in making sure our wastewater system flows smoothly.